Oh, I, 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 Matt Connolly's beard. What about that? It's a beard. <laughs> I just put it on before. It's, uh, that's a, it, that's it a quality beard in. right there, mate. Cool yeah, well, I have to update all my uh, social media yeah. stuff because as you see behind me, it, uh, somebody said it looks like Ben Shapiro, the little <laughs> graphic I've got there with no yeah, beard. Yeah, you're, 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 you're a different man. Oh, I'm, I'm, 10, I'm 20% like stronger. Uh, Fox, Fox wants a double bicep pose from Neil. Oh, he wanted to, not from you, mate. I thought he meant from me. <laughs> from everyone, there we go. Yeah, it's good. The, the, to be fair, mate, it's absolutely rock solid. Oh, so It'd be good there. if I could arm wrestle as good as that as well. <laughs> I could, I could look the look. I can't walk the walk. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of of the Iron House and what you've done there with the production stuff. I think it looks amazing. And as you said, you're the only ones that are doing post sort of uh, editing. It's not live. You film it, and I'm in, amazingly impressed with how you've been able to keep the results suppressed. And I don't think anyone has uh, leaked a result that I've heard of anyway. Um, no, it, and- it's, it was led by the um, Ultimate Fighter approach, mate. A yeah. friend of mine, Michael Bisping, was involved in one of the early Ultimate Fighters. Number three. And um, I was very impressed by that. I saw Mike actually. We went out to Vegas for the finals, and Mike was there. We bumped into each other in, in, the, in the lobby at the hotel there. I said, hey, Mike, how are you doing? He's like, yeah. I said, hey, how'd it go? How'd it go? And Mike's like, I can't tell you, mate. I can't tell you, know, I'd love to tell I did okay. I did, you know, it's okay. I did okay. And I remember at the time thinking I was gasping to know, but Mike kept it, yeah. kept it zipped, you know, and that, and that, um, <clears throat> that situation still presents itself. That was sort of the, 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 the embryonic stage. I thought, oh, you know, and since then we've been, we've been trying to master that. I think we're trying to progress each time and evolve each time. I, I genuinely believe that you, you, that, that all the members and the guys that watch the shows, you'll see a lot better now at, th- at Iron House Three. Mm. We think three is way better. We actually, I thought one was really good. I didn't like two as much. There were some great matches in two, but we got away from the feel a little bit. Just tried something different. D- didn't for me work out. Um, and the the feel of the thing didn't work out. Uh, three, we got back to it a lot. Mm, I love I love finding out the characters, as you said, where you you're building a story, and it if for somebody's watching arm wrestling for the first time, and maybe you've never heard of these two guys, and the way you've presented it is you are finding out well who is who is this person? Why should I care? You know, before the match even starts, and you get mm-hmm. it's like oh, this guy's real arrogant, real aggressive, real you know I'm going to destroy him, and the other guy might be a bit more respectful, and it's like. You can pick your favorite going in before they've even started. And then you get a little bit of an interview in between rounds. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, this was my strategy and this is what happens and I need to turn it around. So, yeah, it, it's different to everything else that's out there. And having it like as an episodic sort of formula, you know, it's like a 25 minute sort of thing. You've got your full storyline going there. And anybody that has never watched arm wrestling before can completely understand what's happening. They get told what the athlete was thinking, how they were trying to set up. Um, and you're you're developing these storylines, these characters, which is which is vital to storytelling in in making a sport successful. Well, it was nice, mate. We and you, you we got um, another of the Aussie lads over, Sam, and mm. uh, Sam Burnett, super quietly spoken, super respectful kid. Um, what a lovely lad! I mean, took, yeah. you know, represented Australia in my experience has been represented very very well in arm wars. Um, Rick Kamana back in the day was the first Aussie to come over. Um, I thought Ryan Bowen's done an excellent job in his outings in, in Arm Wars. Ryan's first match with uh, Anil Najran was a fabulous yeah, match. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> great that. pull, you know. Um, more recently, we had uh, Jordan, who I love. Uh, yeah. What a great lad. Jo- Jordan, amazing. Great puller. He went He's on a character. An, oh, <laughs> mate, he went on an emotional roller coaster that week. He, re- he really did. Um, oh, he didn't yeah. even hold on to the rails. He was up and down. I can't imagine what he was like there. He was he was amazing, mate. Jordan was amazing. Great bloke interacting with the guys in the house. And the and the Iron House one was something special. I, you'd have to be there. It was a weird thing. Um, he was incredible. Sam in this instance was another very different character, but great. Sam gets into some frigging absolute haymakers. He really does. Mm. But the good thing from what you were saying, Matt, is some we took a gamble. We tried to take a gamble on some of these guys coming over as well. Uh, and we're going to continue to do that. I mean, there's a number of lads in Oz that I want to get over, you know. 
Um, Mario interests me greatly. Yeah. You know, he's a guy I've had my eye on for a long period of time, obviously Lachlan. Uh, but there's others as well. I'm trying to keep my eyes on guys behind the scenes, and you, you, you lads can help me with things like that. There's people out there that are just the right guy. Let me tell you now, in this last Iron House, I, I'm going to be careful of how, what I say because I don't <laughs> want to give things away. But Austin Jaggers is a fucking force of nature. If well, that doesn't give anything away because we saw his, his first <laughs> match and then we saw his match against Devin, uh, uh, against Derek. Even when he lost to Lockie, he didn't lose. Like, well, I don't, I don't mean on the table. Oh, I mean, oh. go for a walk. Walk down to the frigging supermarket with that guy. He is a force of nature. There's, he's not there. He's different. He's ace. Ah. How is that man not famous? Another guy, Mika Sakwaralidze. Have you yeah. met Mika? Yeah, yeah, he was on our show. Yeah, he's he's awesome. I love him. Yeah, super, super aggressive on the table. Like really hypes himself up. Uh, incredible puller, yeah, yeah. What a he was on, um, this season, was he? Oh, mate, Mika. Wait till you see Mika's man. Oh, holy shit, I'm excited! I can't say anymore. <laughs> wait, wait till you see Mika's whole experience is stupid. I love him, he will be back. I'll have him tomorrow. Man's ridiculous, ridiculous, yeah. We we went out right for a for a Chinese meal the night the night before the thing started and Mika if you meet Mika you like you say when you've spoken to him even if you speak to him on a podcast to get he's one of those guys that's like let's fucking go like naturally just wants yeah. to let's get out and get on it he's he's absolutely relentless and uh, we we've had guys come over and be really energized you know um, and I said to him hey. And some of the, it's funny because some of the other guys, like Mindigus Terasetis was out with us. And Mindigus leans over and he's like, let's see how Mika feels tomorrow after his first day of Arm Wars. And I'm like, yeah, kind of, yeah. And I, I I just said to him when we got to the table, I'm like, mate, you, you just see how you feel tomorrow. He said, I want to pull everybody. When this thing's done, I'm going to pull you and I'm going to pull you and I'm going to pull Jack and I'm going to pull this guy. I'm going to pull this guy. And I said, just let's see how you go, mate. Let's see how you go. Tomorrow night, Day after you still want to go, we go. Motherfucker was in uh, Dom's hoodie, sat on the goddamn <laughs> settee, wrapped up. We're watching bikini try-ons and shit on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to fucking move. Oh, <laughs> Didn't want to move the day yeah. after. He's like, oh <laughs> my god, everything aches. Busted himself <laughs> to sh smashed himself to bits. Couldn't lift yeah. his cases on the way home. Wrecked. <laughs> and and that, yeah. that that experience, I mean, the other day I, I uh, talked to him on the messenger and said, hey, are you okay? He said, yeah, I'm just going to go get some more scans done. Just to see. <laughs> just to, really? Just to see how bad the damage is and stuff before he can start mm. pulling again. So, lad wow. went in hard. Oh, when is it airing? When When is season three coming out? We, we kick off with Iron House 3. Uh, I would think probably in about three weeks' time, something like that. Okay. James would okay. know better, but I think it's going to be about three weeks' time we'll get going with the Iron House 3, and we've got a lot of stuff that's going to be uh, member-specific as well. We did a, a lot more stuff backstage with the guys to try and get these characters out there and to try and allow yeah. them a forum and also pay back to the members. Um, you know, they're the lifeblood of Arm Wars. There's a massive cost involved with producing to this level, with doing what we do. I mean, we're using, you know very expensive properties for these places for these people and stuff so yeah it's a it's it's a unique experience it's a unique ride but some of the characters we're getting you had jody williams on here the other day jody's in his 40s been been on a roller coaster in his personal life and in his arm wrestling life um could he have gone gone any harder i mean we, we, you saw his you match with Matthew. mate went for it <clears throat> yeah mm, went yeah uh, you were saying before about uh, building the the next generation of stars, and we were talking about this earlier. Is the the guys are at the elite level at the moment? You know, they, they are sort of 
over 50, I would say the majority. Um, and it's like, well, if they get to a point where they start retiring, if you haven't built that next generation of stars, it's like your organization might be in a position where it's like, oh God, no love our audience is uh, starting to drop away. Because if you put big name, same people in as a main event every single time, Mm -hmm. and you're and you're not building your stars from the undercard or if you're not doing similar to what you're doing with armors you're, you're trying to build these people up so that people get an idea as to who who is this person and why should i care then you know it, it, you look at say five ten years time when these guys who are current superstars and they've sort of just dropped out um you better hope that there's there's somebody who has risen up to replace them so i think it's really great the way that you're uh, you're doing that Cheers, brother. And as I say, um, to all the guys in the chat, to all the guys in the sport, we're, um, we look, I mean, Jake and, and John did a great job. <clears throat> we came up with a concept called the Savage Search, which I fed into Jake and John and said, look, you guys want to want a bit of thing for your content. And again, you know, this would be, if you ever want to do it again, Jake, same situation. If it, if it helps, uh, I'll this is Jake's the living. Tale of the Savage Search. <laughs> it's, it's, it's ace, though. If you guys are going out and you're getting these guys, we are looking for that that hidden gem. A moment, Dom, who's exactly the type of guy, new arm wrestler, come in, new fan, perfect. That's what we're looking for. And if these guys appeal to Dom, if Dom likes to watch Ray Lipins get into some dogfight, awesome. But we need you guys. What's a good analogy for you? Okay, you go to watch a soccer team, right? A football team. And on match of the day every week, everybody's talking about they're talking about the striker. They're talking about, you know, they're talking about the star of the show, the Ronaldos, the Messi's. They're talking about that guy, okay? But you speak to the guy that watches that team week in, week out, and he's not influenced by a match of the day. They'll tell you that there's some guy who plays on right midfield or right back who's a fucking weapon. They'll say, this guy is the frigging heartbeat of this team. And when yeah. that guy doesn't play well, our team doesn't play well. Forget the centre forward, the star. The, the, you know, they'll say <laughs> that is our rock. He is our rock. Find me that guy. That's mm. the fucking guy. The unsung hero that is a mega puller, a mega character, and you just don't know him, but you wish you did. So many times we get, oh, this guy, this guy's amazing. Devin Larratt was that guy for Christ's sake. When I put Devin Larratt into the PAL. They laughed at me. They said, are you serious? You want to bring this guy and put him against Taras? I'm like, mate, <laughs> I'm telling you, just what is this kid? There's others, and I may not know him. Do you? Yeah, I, I was really impressed with the way that, that, that John actually handled that. I mean, after the event aired, and then the hatred just built up, and I think people just enjoy that drama, and they just really pile onto it, and it's like, oh, you know, it's something to talk about for the next week. Mm -hmm. Um, and John stepped away from that for maybe a two week period. Uh, and then when he came back, he just said, look, on, on the moment, um, I apologized to my opponent and, uh, he accepted the apology and that's all that really needed to happen. And now I'm going to move forwards and I don't really care if you guys don't like it. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm not going to like hide in the corner. Like I'm me. That's what happened. He doesn't have a problem with it he's happy with my apology i've moved on and i'm going to keep doing what i'm doing i thought it was great he was uh, looking uh, for sorry jake were you going to go there brother oh no i was just going to say i would love like a behind the scenes commentary matt because um it's no hidden fact uncle john and i speak every day we we talk every day it was twice a day during all of that mm -hmm. um john was getting death threats I was getting death threats for not burying John on YouTube. So, like, John's like, uh, um, you know, hey, man, take your time. I'm here with you. What, whatever, man. I'm, I'm not leaving John. I'm, I'm, you got blah, blah, blah. But then, like, John's like, right, this is the video. This is the video I'm going to make. And it was like, put the put the title list down, and he teed off. And I was like, John, take a breath. Delete that video. You're not putting that one out. I'm like, all right. Next day, I wake up. This is the video. What do you think of this? And he's fucking and this, that, and the other. No, let's try again, John. Let's try. You're better than this, John. You're better than this. I know you're hurting. You're better than this. And then, uh, then we got that. But it was just funny, like 
just in retrospect, uh, he obviously made the the right choice in the end. But his first his first couple of takes, he, he was after blood. <laughs> um, I have a lot of time for Matt Connolly. I have a lot of time for the guy, what he's trying to achieve there, and more power to him. I mean, for, <clears> for <throat> me, Neil, you've uh, been the inspiration for you know for arm wrestling. Any time you look at any arm wrestling stuff from the last I don't know maybe twenty plus years, it's you. It's your voice. You're the guy. You're the man for everything. Um, so you know you're the the father of arm wrestling in, in a lot of respects. You know you, you, you've built the sport so much. And I know that we were incredibly excited. Uh, you left a comment on our um, AWE stream and uh, you said that um, Dave Stockbridge, who had done the ring announcing for that, um, did a great job. <laughs> you know, we were over the moon for that. Like it was, uh, we screenshotted that and we'll save that forever. But, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we wish the best for, for every arm wrestling organization out there and, and especially yourself and uh, 98% and all these places that are that are building this sport. And as we said before, you know, as fans of the sport, you want to see more arm wrestling and, and the fact that there are organizations coming up all around the world means it's heading in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought it was really endearing that Dave, the amount of effort that Dave Stockbridge had put into, uh, and yourselves in the, 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 the whole event, the amount of effort you've put into trying to do things right. Uh, I, I appreciate that. I feel that. I've lived that. And um, I know that you guys have put it all in there. And uh, every credit to you. And I, and I was, I thought Dave was trying. You could see how much he was trying, um, and I just wanted to acknowledge that. And good on the lad. Uh, he was wrapped. He was absolutely wrapped. <laughs> good dude. Very good dude, Dave Stockbridge. I love him. I absolutely love him.